Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here for the semifinals of the Season 3 Platinum Diamond Tournament. First off, these two teams went into the, went into the playoffs here, and our first team, the C team, comes into this game undefeated. In the meantime, Superior, your number five seed, comes in after reverse sweeping voltage in the quarterfinals, and so we have ourselves a good game here. My name is Clutch Key for your play-by-play -play casting. Joining us here on the color call is Bryce Teeve. What's up, my man? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good as well. So we got ourselves an exciting matchup here, the semifinals here, to, and only one team can move on here. These two teams working super hard to get to this point now, but only one can move on to the championship round. So what are you looking forward to coming into this game? I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, to CNC team bringing the same kind of fire, same kind of energy that they've been bringing in this entire season. But I'm also excited to see what else Superior can bring into this match. You know, with that reverse sweep, they're showing that they're a team that that even though that they were the fifth seed coming into this, they're not a team to be messed around with. They they need to be taken seriously, and I'm hoping that they can show that in this semifinal game. Mm -hmm. And then. And then Superior now coming into this game too. Superior, you have you have a reverse sweep coming, so that's a lot of momentum coming in. But now you have to face a, face the number one team, the C team, with a lot of good players. But let's feature one Hudak, who was in our All Star game earlier this season. He is going. He has gone off. And how much do you expect Hudak to do for the C team right now? I mean, I'm expecting I'm expecting some some very just zeroing in headshots all around the game. Uh, I'm hoping that. Superior at least has an answer for him if they can at least just, you know, keep him busy, keep him, keep him pressured so that the rest of the team can at least, you know, poke their heads out, get some, get some uh, pressure on the rest of the team. Because if they don't do anything about Hudak, that's game, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going on to Nepal here. So our first map on uh, Nepal, we're going to be here on the Sanctum. So the Sanctum, a very closed area for the first point here and um, some environmental possibilities. So... What are we going to expect coming in here to uh, kind of find out from the teams of what to expect? So uh, up in uh, recent games, we've seen Superior running a pretty competent dive, um, you know, with Admioko on the, the Winston, a pretty aggressive Winston that's known to dive the, the back line, putting some pressure on the healers. Killer Kel on Diva is not, not to be scoffed at by any means. Um, Supersonic and Gohan running supports. Uh, Polly with the, with, with the Genji is, is definitely a... a, a you know, a solid pick. We've seen him running, but of course, with with um, C team here, we got Hudak on Widow, and Jedi Ron Paul on uh, Arissa, which is a pretty common pick on this map with the uh, her right click to be able to pull some players off the side. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be a very interesting point because every time now we've seen that the first point is super, super important. So Sanctum going to really be a factor here coming into the next maps as we see either uh, Village or uh, Shrine coming in next. So our team's coming in next. Our team's coming in for the first team fight here, not electing to go for the point as it opens up in 15 seconds. So electing to start off with the team. Here comes the dive coming in though. Air starting off this team fight as that Tracer looking for kills. And Polly starting us off with a few kills here, uh, with one kill here rather, and air with that Genji dive, uh, Genji uh, Tracer combo with the dive, working so far so good, as the only one on point right now, Gohan sticking to the point and uh, getting their first strike here on the get here on Sanctum. And here you can see again that that deep dive by Amioko just running by the rest of the team and trying to put some pressure on the healers, but was just shut down by Huduk. And so Hudok here getting main, the main kills right now because he on this Widowmaker, he is dangerous. And already Spike Mecco with that whole hog coming in. And Miyoko's going to punish him though. So right now, Polly's going to come in with the Dragon Blade. But how about the Bagel shutting him down already? And so right now, C Team is winning this fight entirely. So this may give them the opportunity to try and push this point here. But C Team not pushing up just yet as they're waiting for something to happen. And again, you can see now that uh, Superior has ult advantage. You know, we got a Trans and a Valkyrie coming into this next fight. Mm -hmm. And so, not able to get Killer Kel. Does get the DMAC, first of all. Finally gets Killer Kel. They should have this point, but no. Add Miyoko. There's Air with a false bomb on Tobago, getting rid of the healer. So, just it, maybe less than an inch left on that. On that. Uh, on the tick there for the point here, you still see Superior getting percentage on this point, holding it down. Superior holding it very well, and Atmioko has himself some kills with that Prama Rage. So a good defensive hold for Superior as they keep getting percentage, and C-Team just couldn't do anything about it. 
And you can see again, at Miyoko pulling, popping the primal rage and just going straight for Hudok to try and, you know, take him out to take some pressure off the rest of his team. But you know, again, we we see pretty even alts. You know, with self destruct, it can be a game changer. It can also just be a throwaway alt to try and just get them off point to give you some breathing room. And Dragon Strike from Trash Rodin coming out right down the middle, a little high, so not getting anybody so far. There's the power booster by right Jadaran Paul. Now here comes the self destruct. That's gonna only get the power booster. Air with that pulse bomb has been so good, so far, so good this game. As he's got, he hasn't gotten uh, no kills on that pulse bomb yet. So the only one holding it right now, Jadaran Paul. Uh, or Jedi Ron Paul rather holding it down, but Superior is gonna push them all the way back. Oh, so close! Right now, the Bagel holding it with that transcendence, trying to get something here for the C team. Right now, C team staggering, so Superior is gonna have to find themselves a way to push them back. So right now, just one after the other. Polly's got himself a Dragon Blade. Self Destruct coming out as well. That's not gonna get anybody. Polly has himself two kills. So right now, just a push and shove, the stagger happening right now, and we don't know who's going to take this point. It's looking very close, you know, still contested with 99%. So 99%, 5 to 1 on this point right now, Superior does have the advantage. Huduk and Jedi Ron Paul still on this point, and that is finally going to end the team fight here. Nobody else on that stagger, Superior holds it all the way, and C-Team's going to have to find an answer for Superior coming up on this next map. It was a very good push by Superior, you know, getting getting onto that point early. But you can also see near the end of that, um, uh, Jedi Ron Paul was nearly on the point all by himself while, you know, um, um, uh, well, Polly was in the back line just messing around with all their healers and keeping pressure on the rest of the team and just leaving, leaving uh, C-Team's main tank to just alone on the point. All right, so now we come into our next map. This is the village, right? This is the village. So we're coming into our next map here, a very important map, a little more of an open concept now. So you're gonna see a little more maybe sniper action as we see Hudak moving on over from that Widowmaker to the Hanzo. We'll see if that makes a difference. But what what kind of plays do you expect coming in for C Team to try and take this to game three? I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing a, a pretty pretty meta comp going out uh, for C Team with the the uh, Reinhardt and Zarya combo, uh, pretty very good sh uh, tank combo, um, and then with Huduk on the Hanzo to hopefully get that Dragon Surge in. And so far, so good ham. for Superior. Go yeah, Gohan and Admioko going ham as well. Superior has got themselves a team kill to start, and that should be an easy take as the point unlocks already. So Superior holding back the undefeated team so far. C team's got to find a way to climb down here in game one. Yeah, you're definitely seeing the you're seeing the the fire that this team is coming out with with Admioko and Gohan on fire. Um, no alts building yet, but we're we're getting pretty close. Um, to uh to you know about halfway to Primal Rage and Trance. So we're gonna see try to see that same corridor. Uh, C teams are gonna try and push here, but Polly, how about this Genji working for Polly so far? He's been on it. He's had a Dragon Blade not get less than one kill on it. So Polly really working hard for Superior. That's going to allow Superior to push in the C team here. Here comes the Dragon Blade we were just talking about. Is that going to get anybody though? No, at Miyoko is actually going to get himself three kills there. So, so far, so good. Superior's got themselves 40% on this point. At Miyoko is definitely showing that he can be a very aggressive uh, Winston that, that you know, put not only puts pressure on C team's backline, but also just getting the, the tanks to just take a couple steps back and... You know that can be a fatal flaw when you have Polly diving in with a with a dry uh, with a, a dragon blade. Team doesn't really know who to focus. You know the the big target that's doing a lot of damage to everyone, or the very quick target that's just slashing down their team. So coming up now here, you're gonna see some alts being played up here. Here comes the flank from the C team here, trying to push up this point. Admioko using that primal rage though, trying to push up anybody on this point. Earth Shatter gets two people. It's so far so good. Who duck? How about this Hanzo play coming out of a Dragon Strike and another kill on Polly? So that gets rid of a few important people. And Hudok just going off right now. Self Destruct coming in. Is that going to get anybody though? Not going to get anybody. And that is enough for the C team to finally get their first flip here on the ball. I know we like to talk about Hudok on Widow, but again, uh, put him on any sniper or any any you know aim oriented hero, and he can just he can perform, you know, even outperform a lot of other players that we see in the league, and especially you know. With a, a, the dra a um, an Earth Shatter and a Dragon right there, it was just perfectly executed by C Team to retake that to take that point for the first time. And coming into this now, they have 82 uh, percent. Superior has 82 percent coming into this point, so C Team can't afford another flip here. Otherwise, they're going to take this into overtime. 
Exactly, but um, you know, Superior knows that they have time here. They don't have to, you know, rush super far into this. You know, only a 33% versus an 82. And you can see Superior already working at Miyoko, coming in right now, and starts off the team fight well for Superior. But C team looking like a good push right now. Dragon Strike coming in. Where is that going to come in from? We don't know. I believe that's going to be the Dragon Strike from Kuduk. That's going to come right down the middle of the point out of nowhere, but it doesn't get anybody. So right now, it's still C-Team holding this point as Superior not finding this answer with Trash Ronin on that Brigida working well with his, with his team. You know, and even that, 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 that Dragon Strike was a little bit high and a little off-kilter off that point. It still, you know, helps... C team push that push that heavy pushback from uh, Superior with that Miyoko just going straight for Hudak. So right now, just C team working very well here. They've almost equalized. They've almost equalized the po uh, percentage points here at 78 percent to 82. So Superior now the ones that's got to find an answer for C team right now. At Miyoko's gonna stay up top, so he, we're gonna see if he can find an answer to help out his team here. And here comes the pulse bomb, not getting a kill this time. So error. Error using that pulse bomb for not, but here comes the team from C Team Polly with the Dragon Blade. So we're gonna see if he gets anybody. Guess who duck in the process? Graviton Surge coming out now, and Polly is gonna go down. So good alt here being used by C Team as we head into overtime at Miyoko Gohan using those uh, invincibility so far. Primer Rage coming out for at Miyoko trying to clear the point. Gohan does go down. And eventually, Atmioka is going to go down here with that Orb of Discord. So C Team is going to have themselves a game three to try and come back from this. A great play by C Team to defend this point. You know, when you saw that Graviton coming in with that that ground shatter, you know, it popped out a lot of damage that I feel like Superior just didn't have much of an answer to. Um, you know, especially with that pulse bomb that you know, yeah, I feel I, I saw it got the stick on Juice Man, but with that Moira left shift, she just. Uh, shaded out of it and didn't take the damage. But now we see Hudok back on Widow. Um, and not much of a change from the rest of the comp. We still see Trash Roden on Brigida, which is still a pretty, it's a pretty solid counter towards Dive. You know, the, the, the stun and the whip shot is a really good answer to hitting a Winston or a D.Va mid-charge to just give yourself some space to stop them in their tracks and kind of set them off rhythm. But now we see Polly switching to uh, Farah and Supersonic on Mercy, so we might be seeing a bit of a pharmacy action, which, now that Hudok's back on Hanzo, isn't much of a, a response anymore, but I wouldn't be surprised if he still managed to, uh, shut that down himself. And we saw Polly back in the quarterfinals here against Voltage. Polly on this Farah getting that quintuple kill earlier with that Rocket Barrage, so Polly could be very well a factor, but Hudok just answers my question and takes him out of play, so right now, C Team the one winning the battle so far, but not much of a push here. And then finally, Jedi Ron Paul is going to start us off here. And on the point right now, uh, Spike Mecha here on that Zarya, as we saw very effective last game. Now starting on this point, so right now just a push and shove game. Gohan the only one of the points, so he's going to try and defend this as long as he can. And he's not going to be able to get it. So with that push, C Team has themselves the first strike here in game three. And definitely that, that Storm Arrow from Hudok to knock Polly out of the sky was a really big momentum shift for Superior because they, they managed to dive their team off of the side of this point really well, but um, wasn't really followed up well when you saw Spike Mecha jumping onto the point himself. So Polly's going to try and start off this fight with a few rockets himself, trying to get up top there, but Polly's got himself that uh, Rocket Barrage incoming as well as Hudok's Dragon Strike as well, so we'll see. Here comes the Rocket Barrage, that's one, but not going to get anything else as the Bago has him on the leash there. And Superior, but Superior coming out here, Air's got himself a few kills. What a play by Air, a triple kill to start off his team, to start off the team kill. That would be Superior's first flip here on Shrine. It was just such a, a wonderful push by Air to, 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 you know, that double kill really pushed the momentum back into Superior's side. But going into this next battle, we see an even alt economy on both sides, although Superior does have both of their support alts coming up, and they'll have a Primal Rage coming up pretty soon. Oh yeah, at Mionko, we've seen with that Primal Rage, very big, but here comes the team, D team as well. And so, here comes... Uh... Polly hanging out here on the side, trying to get a thing, and this would have been a better strategy with that rocket rush. But Polly's going to send itself to kill. So Superior's got themselves a good hold so far. Four kills for them in this team fight, and that is going to push back C Team all the way back. And maybe another. It's not going to be a team kill necessarily. Oh, there it is. There's the team kill. But yep, there's the team kill announcement from Athena. So Superior has themselves another good push, and now um, just beating out the percentage of C Team so far. All right, and going into this. 
not a whole lot of, uh, of uh, you know, alts were used up in that push, but, you know, both teams are building up almost all their alts. You know, Polly's going to have uh, Barrage coming into this next, but we also hoping to maybe get see a Dragon Surge coming up from behind uh, on C-Team, this, this push. Air's gonna have himself a pulse bomb as well, so air might be a factor here. Polly using that rocket barrage, but all for not as the bagel takes him down. And self-destruct not gonna get anybody. So in the process right now, two alts down for superior and no kill. So C team really gonna come into this with the advantage as they start moving in. Dragon Strike coming in right down, uh, right by the entrance for Superior. So not gonna get anybody, but does clear the point. And Polly, the only one right now on this point trying to help out his team. And so, really, just a six on one on this point right now. And C Team is going to have themselves an answer here to Superior as they flip the points at 90%. And again, that that just unlucky uh, quick pick on Supersonic from Hudok to just shut down Farah's healing. Healing left her per all alone to drop that rocket barrage from above and just got shut down once again by Hudok. Unfortunately, not seeing a dragon surge, but, you know, with how quickly. Hudak can charge that ult. We might be seeing a Dragon Surge up again. Spike Mecha still holding on to that, um, that Graviton. And unfortunately, Superior only has two ults going into this next battle. Maybe getting a, a uh, Barrage coming in, but all we see is this, just them taking, taking some quick pokes while the rest of uh, Superior catches up with their front line. And just as you said, that Polly comes in with the Barrage. Here comes the Rocket Barrage coming in. Does get Juice Man, but the Transcendence coming in handy there for the Bagel. Graviton Search coming in, is that going to get anybody? Dragon Strike's going to get one, there's two. Hudik's got himself a double kill to start off this team fight, so so far so good for C Team on their what could be final push here. Superior's got to, got to find an answer here as C Team got themselves a push at Miyoko with uh, no Primal Rage, so he might go down easily as, Hu as Huduk just working on this Hanzo. So far so good, C Team's going to have themselves a flip here in overtime. And again, that was just a, a, a chaotic push on a on a superior's end, you know, there was a lot of quick picks that, that really helped shift the change of that, uh, that, that, that team fight. And so, last team fight here, we thought C team had one more try, but Superior now only has one more try. Somebody's gotta get on this point though, nobody so far. There it is, Killer Cow's gonna activate overtime, so here we go. The final team fight for both sides, winner take all here in map number one. Dragon Strike comes right down the middle, does get Polly in the process, so that's a huge kill there. For uh for the C team, Supersonic does res Killer Cal, so we still have a team fight right in the middle. Superior winning the team fight though. How about Ad Miyoko coming in with a few kills himself? Superior is going to have themselves a flip, and unless anybody can change C team's mind here, uh, Trash Rodan is going to try and come in, but it's not going to be enough. What a game one! Superior gives themselves a two one win here on Nepal. Giving myself goosebumps just watching that last point. Ad Miyoko just going insane with that that monkey jumping and of course you know play the game cannot cannot argue that he is a just wonderfully aggressive uh winston that just works so well with his with his team so coming in quadruple kill even for this one working so well and there's another one for him too so really at miyoko just working <laughs> there and very well deserved their 17 jump pack kills i mean that's insane Goodness. Yeah, that's insane. My goodness. I mean, any other stats that you can bring up for Adioko? <laughs> I mean, the man just uh, went off. He just went off the entire game. I mean, what a tank play from him as well for Superior. Definitely had a, 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 a wonderful game. You know, Superior showing that even though Dive isn't the prominent comp or meta uh, in the game anymore, you know, it's, it's a lot of Ryan and Zarya, uh, Mercy, Zen, Hanzo, and then a Brig or a junk or a widow to you know try and fill that last role pretty well but still running a dive against especially uh with trash rodent on brig that in almost that entire game didn't really have much of an answer and i felt like the the the, the change on from hudok with the uh from from widow to hanzo was maybe you know a, a retroactive switch you know widow may not be super strong on nepal uh with the comp that they're running especially with uh, you know, when you're running against the dive, you want your team kind of, you know, clutch, uh, put all together so that Brig can shut them down and the rest of the team can capitalize on that, you know, wounded or stunned tank. Didn't didn't see a whole lot of, uh, you know, super spectacular plays from that Brig. Um, but, you know, she is a new hero. Uh, I'm sure Trash Roden is still getting used to the hero. But again, at Miyoko on that, that Winston was... was a sight for sore eyes uh, for those who still believe in, in, in the dive meta, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. 
And so now we, and so, I mean, what a way to start off game one here, two to one and a 99 to 99% flip for Superior to win that one, even though C team had themselves a push. But I'll, I'm going to talk about one thing on C team here. Who Duck does, is going off on the Widowmaker sniper combo, which does Superior just might have an answer for the team fight overall. So what does C team really have to do to try and clamp down as we uh, approach our escort map here? I mean, again, it, it, it does, um, you know, uh, coming up on, on watch point, it, it's a very, especially the first and third points are very heavy widow position, like, uh, points, you know, you're, I, I, I would, uh, bet any sum of money that Hudak is going to be on that widow and is just going to be, as long as he's uncontested, he's just going to be zeroing in healers first, then the DPS and then, and then dinking down those, uh, those tanks. But from what I'm seeing, the the aggressive dives by at Miyoko, if he can focus those on Hudak, and then, uh, you know, especially if he's taking the high ground, just take down Hudak, go straight for him, and then jump down and then focus on the healers with maybe uh, Killer Kel coming into focus at that point after, you know, helping the healers or that, that mid fight. Um, you know, that might be the answer to to the, uh, the Hudak equation is just... A, a dive comp and a, uh, a main tank that is as aggressive as at Miyoko, mm -hmm. which is, you know, definitely, definitely uh, uh, something, something to watch. And so, like you said, Watchpoint Gibraltar, our next map here. And so Superior is going to have themselves a 1-0 lead to start. And how good does... And you got to feel good about Superior right now. Um, Superior Reverse Sweeps comes in with the momentum and starts off against C-Team right now with a win. And they're not only two wins away from making the championship game and also defeating the only undefeated team left here in the, in the playoffs. So Superior's got to feel really good about themselves right now. Definitely. And I, I'm sure I'm, I'm not the only one who's... Uh one for rooting for the underdog here and, and especially it would be a, a hard loss for C team but i'm sure that they're taking that as even more uh um motivation to, to you know to clamp this down and you know focus on on you know proper calls you know i i'm i'd be you know remiss to, to to find out that they were you know panicking in this situation uh you know especially coming in from a an undefeated uh season uh into this but Again, looking at uh, comps on both teams, and unless something changes here, you know we have hair on or air on um, uh, Widowmaker, which you know could be a response to uh, a Hudak. You know, it just depends on who's the better Widow in that situation, uh, because definitely any the the second that those gates open, the first Widow to go down immediately sets the stage for um, how that how the rest of that fight is going to go. Uh, you know, oh, and now we see air on Hanzo, which. A welcome change. I, I haven't seen him uh, play that personally, but uh, you know, with the comp they're running, it, it's definitely a, a you know uh, a sniper that works. Yep, and so we're gonna have ourselves our first team fight here. Killer Kel already starting off in this bridge, knowing that they're gonna be there. So a first start off here is the payload gets moving by the hands of Gohan on the Senyata right now, trying to snipe up top. But here comes the teams up top, and this is gonna be a super important team fight as Killer Kel does get demacked and he's gonna have to fall down. But Hudok on the Widowmaker showing off his stuff gets a pick on arrow, two headshots in a row, and Hudok. Like you said, for this Widowmaker, sets the stage as C-Team now going to have to fall back here and try and reset on this payload, even though it keeps moving. But C-Team's just going to push up Superior all the way back to their spawn. And again, it was it was no the, the, that very quick double headshot that Hudak just threw out. Again, already on fire, already has infrared sight. Quickest alt built already. Watching that DMAC and just waiting, waiting for that perfect moment to see that Baby Diva pop out and then just pop the head quickly switched and took air out again forcing superior all the way back again and hudak actually using that infrared sight as you said just now um and trying to get a position on where they're coming from so a good play by him so far as c team is going to have themselves a try on the fence here or act, rather superior is going to have themselves a try on the payload actually nobody moving on this payload air is going to start us off with a headshot though on juice man so that's going to get rid of the mercy and c team not having much of an answer but here comes hudak the Widowmaker battle so far in Hudak's favor right now, as you'll see a push and shove kind of a thing. But C Team splitting up Superior, and C Team's going to have themselves another good defense as Superior is just backing off. And again, that that pick by Air on on uh, Juiceman was a decisive pick. 
But I just feel like Superior didn't push, like, didn't have enough to capitalize on, on that. And you saw, I saw Killer Kel pushing that, uh, Huduk, and, you know, putting enough pressure on him to, to give his team some breathing room and possibly give Air the time that he needed to get that pick. But then again, lost sight of him, and once, once Huduk got set up and, you know, got zeroed in, it, it, you know, that was, that was the end of that push, in my opinion. Riley coming out now for Trash uh, Rodan, so we'll see uh, if Superior can get themselves a win on the team fight here. Su uh, Self Destruct coming in up top, great placement, gonna get Supersonic to start us off here. And so right now, it's just no answer from Superior right now. As the Dragon Blade's gonna come out from Polly, see if he can do anything with this. And Self Destruct also coming out for Superiors as well, but not gonna get anybody. So Killer Kill, uh, Self Destruct all for not here. Primal Rage coming out now at the same time for Atmioko, and he's been good on this Winston so far. But right now, C Team has the answer to try and push back Superior. So, coming into this next, coming into this final turn for point A, C Team has themselves a good defense. Superior's got to find an answer. You saw it was a very, very quick deflect by Polly on the, uh, the, 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 that Hudak snipe. And now we see that, that self destruct coming in. Oh, Spike Mecha gets himself a kill. Gets himself a kill on Supersonic, but here comes that, here comes the Burgito winston combo coming out for C-Team right now, which has the answers for C-Team against Superior right now. So 45 seconds left to go. Admioko's gonna put, uh, just gonna retreat here. And so C-Team having themselves a lot of good defenses. Superior's gotta find one more, gotta find an answer here with 30 seconds on the clock. And you see the, the, the switch from uh, on air from Widow to Tracer to try and just get some extra damage down range, hoping that her tank or the that the, the tanks on Superior can at least do something to, to just distract uh, Hooduck while the rest of the team is pumping down damage uh, to the rest of the team. So we'll see if Brands on both sides oh, mm -hmm. and a Dragon Blade. Yep. So we'll see that Dragon Blade come out for Polly. So Polly's gonna miss so far as Superior. Or I'm sorry. As uh, C team's gonna drop here from Hudok. Self destruct coming in, but is that gonna get anybody? Is the question. No, it does not. But Superior finding answers right now as uh, Gohan's gonna take down Hudok. So a good, a good way to take out the sniper right now. But a push in, shove kind of math here in overtime, working out in Superior's favor. This Primal Rage coming out for Atnioko, pushing them all the way back. So Superior in the last hopes of point number one, two and a half minutes now on the clock. They've got themselves point one. Especially coming to this next part, that that ship at the top, uh, at the middle, is definitely a, a perfect spot for a widow to set up. And as this as this payload moves further up, you're going to see different sp spots where uh, Hudok is going to set up. But you see that early pick on Atmioko on Juice Man. Hopefully, uh, just because of the bad spawns and not because he was extended over too much. But especially at this point, those those bad spawns, you just want to get out of the way as soon as possible, so you're not staggering in with the rest of your team. So actually, with that pick up as well on uh, Juice Man here, C Team's gonna have themselves a, uh, play themselves a little back here. Superior's got around the first two turns with ease. Now the question is, they're in the home stretch of point two. Can they hold on to it? No response so far from C Team here, as somebody's got to get on this point if they want to contest it a little bit. But it looks like, oh no, 1.27 left to go. Polly's gonna activate his Dragon Blade, picks off Hu Duck immediately. So this is gonna be a battle of if Polly can get something else there. Trash Rodan goes down along with it. And Spike Mecha starts off C Team's push with a self destruct kill on air. But right now, it's so far so good for Superiors. They have the team fight advantage. Transcendence being popped by Gohan. And so right now, still, here's the pulse bomb, not getting anybody. Self destruct coming in. Is that going to get anybody? Does get a double kill on Hoodluck and Juice Man. And so that's going to be a good push for Superior. There's only two people left. It's going to be Killer Kel on. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be Spike Mecha on that Diva. But a good. But still staggering here. Spike Mechas has himself a hold. Jedi Ron Paul in with this Winston. So a little bit of a push and jump thing. And the tank's working very hard for C-Team as they try to get the rest of their team back. And here they come. That was just, just a wonderful hold by C-Team's tanks right there. Just to keep keep the rest of Superior busy while the rest of the team could just come in. And you see that pick by Hooduck, Trash Roden, and um, Jedi Ron Paul to just slow down Superior's push. Slow down they have here as C, as C team has themselves a defensive hold, but look how much distance there is from that and their second point. 0.64 meters there to get their second point, but C team with the stagger holds on. Superior's got to find an answer. One more team fight left. With a 91% on that dead, I'm, 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 I have my fingers crossed that Huda can get himself in a position to just get the, nail that dead eye off with, with, uh, against Adam, um, Admioko's shields or Killer Kel's defense matrix. 
So overtime going to be triggered here as C Team or Superior does get there in time. And Hooduck with that dead eye does get supersonic, but nobody else there on the fight. So Superior is going to have themselves a push right now, but nobody watching the point. Self destruct coming in, and I don't know who that is. That's going to be Spike Mecha's getting itself a double kill at the same time as the D Mech for Kill Kill. So Spike Mecha coming off here in the final seconds of overtime, and C Team, what a defensive hold. C Team's going to have themselves a good defense. Superior gonna have to find an answer. One nothing to start us off here in round one. And that was that was just a perfectly timed and angled self-destruct by Spike Mecha there with that double kill and then jumping back in their mech and just cleaning up the rest of their team. Yeah, I mean you gotta wonder what Polly was thinking uh there going with a, a Farah on this enclosed area against Hudak on, on McCree. You know, a very strong counter to that. And you know, you can be one of the best Farahs in the game, but uh, a hit scan player as good as Hooduck, you might as well just pack your bags and 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 go home uh, with with a flying target like that. And so Superior now, after Nepal two to one win, now you see C Team kind of stepping up the game a little bit here, changing it up. And Spike Mecco, I mean, what a play to end that. So C Team only has to get this basically up to where they up to. Um, the point right before the second point there for um, Superior. So Superior's got to find a way to climb down. Exactly, again, and, uh, you know, not seeing too much of a change uh, on these comps going forward. Again, um, with, you know, except with uh, with, with Bagel, uh, you know, having a little fun in the spawn room. Um, but again, you know, Ad Miyoko playing that aggressive Winston definitely gave... Uh, the C team something to, something to uh to 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 worry about with uh, Hooduck switching to McCree to just you know stay with the rest of his team and, and give give his healers a little more cover than he could uh, as Widow. But now we see him back on the Widow, especially with his first point on attack, is a Widow's paradise. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna see the wi let's see if the Widow's paradise pays off. So the only one on that Widowmaker though, Hooduck right now. So we'll see if. Paradise is upon him here. He's going to start us off with the payload here, but Hudak looking for any picks on the side. Has a good angle to start off here, but everybody's going to stay on that corridor to try and avoid Hudak as much as possible. So we start off with a few gun meters here. That's going to be most of the team here on the point, and now we're going to get ourselves the upstairs battle. As we see right in that corridor, Hudak uh, so far on this Widowmaker has been so impressive. Gets the kill on Supersonic and the D-Beck. On Killer Kel, so right now this team from C Team just having all the answers. Superior not having a callback. Hello. And a uh, 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 heavy push by uh, Jedi Ron Paul and Trash Rodent there to, to take out that Baby Diva and uh, Tracer and, and push back. You know any any you know uh, you know prospective push by uh, Admioko right there. And so, oh my, oh, oh, so close there. They almost had the first point with ease, but C Team's, but Severe's gonna have, gonna make this a game here as Gohan starts us off with a few good kills there on that Zenyatta. So Gohan's been impressive all game long with the Zenyatta, showing off his stuff as the rest of his team, as Atmioko activates that Primal Rage, clearing out the points. So Superior holds this well here on the first point, but C Team still got a lot of time on the clock. And you know you can you can definitely tell that Superior has has taken uh, knowledge of, of of how just consistent Hooduck has been, you know, staying uh, in that in that corridor even though it's it's tight. It's a lot more difficult for a widow, uh, especially if they only have one place where they can really set up to to, to zero you in. You know, you can see Gohan here staying behind the forklift, staying in cover, while the rest of his team is is uh, you know spreading out and trying to focus on one hero and take them down. As you can see. And we only have about two alts on Superior going into this next push. Trash Runner's going to start off with that and kill right inside the server room. So right now it's still a little bit of a push a push and shove on both sides as the rest is going to come up on air by Supersonic. Here comes the self-destruct. Where's the damage though? That's going to be a double kill for Spike Mecha. Santa Maria. Another one. Another double kill for Killer Kellen. What about the Diva place here? Two to two here for Superior and C Team here. So still a push and shove here as the point approaches its destination for the first point. And so right now, C Team is gonna have the answer as they're gonna push up here. The only one left, Killer Kel, is gonna try and defend this point as much as he can. Gonna get DMAC and is going to die in the process. So C Team has themselves the first point in an additional two and a half minutes on the clock, but what a play by both sides. 
especially both those diva alts back to back double kills i mean a, a, a diva's best dream is seeing that winston shield destroyed right before that alt pops off because you know oh and looks like we're hit with a pause here it looks like uh polly's been disconnected oh boy i believe yes polly has been disconnected from the game so we're gonna have a pause here so Right now, right now, this may be a good time for Superior to talk it over as Polly reconnects because Superior did didn't have as much time here. We saw Superior earlier in the first um, uh, first round, their first try earlier. They didn't have any time on the clock before they got the first uh, two games, or before their sorry before overtime. There, they didn't have any good pushes up until overtime, and then they didn't have as much time. You have C team now with 3:45 on the clock. So, what is what does Superior really have to do to try and clamp down and try and pick off C team as much as they can? And again, I mean, I know we like to talk about how how well Huduk plays this uh, this this Widowmaker, but again, Spike Mecha on um, Diva, especially with that last push, and Jared, uh, sorry, Jedi Ron Paul on that Winston, you know, another heavy dive. Doesn't seem like Superior is having that much of a response to it. You know, when you saw you saw earlier on um, Nepal, you know, you had Trash Roden on Brig to try and counter that dive um, best that they could. And after seeing that it didn't really work, they decided to put Trash Roden on Genji. Uh, and, you know, that seemed like more of a comfort pick for him because you, with with the, the backup of Jedi Ron Paul, um, you know, he's able to, you know, feel more confident, uh, comfortable and dive their back lines a little bit more. Um, but especially going into this next fight, you know, we're, uh, Bagel seems to be the only one on C team with an ult. You know, it's a trans, and that can be a really good... Uh, counter to alts, or it can also be a really good uh, way to push on uh, a point, especially with a um, depending on which uh, if Polly goes back to Genji, it's definitely a good Genji counter, um, but with Supersonic on uh, Mercy with their alt, it's, it, it could be a, um, uh, a very quick push on either side, uh, but we do see ooh, ooh. Oh, Huda coming out with a double headshot kill to start us off here after the pause. So it looks like C-Team is going to start recovering first after the pause here. And what's going to be huge about this disconnect too is Polly doesn't have any percentage on his on his ultimate to start off. So that's going to be huge for them. I see with this Primal Rage coming in, already down to half his health on, on Ad uh, Admioko. Admioko trying to heal up actually after that uh, loss on his uh, health. But it's going to be superior so far with... This push on him as Amioko doesn't even need the primal rage to get himself a few kills here. And C team is gonna have themselves or is gonna have to try and answer back here. Superior has themselves a good hold. And you can see that again, that aggressive push that we've been talking about a lot from Matt Miyoko, taking down both of C team's healers in a very short amount of time. Especially with that pulse bomb by air taking down Hudok, it more or less left C team's uh, healers uncontested to one of those really aggressive dives, even though Winston has such a large hitbox. So we're going to see a little bit of a force play here. Back up on top, Trash Ronin gets him the kill on the Mercy. So right now, Supersonic going down. That is their main target so far as we've seen Supersonic go down in maybe the first parts of every play here. So really focusing on that Mercy, but still a push up by C-Team here. As Superior is going to have to hold back right now. I'm going to try and replay back as Trash Ronin comes in with the Dragon Blade. Is that going to get anybody? Here comes the Self-Destruct as well. Right in the middle of that Winston bubble. So a good play by Spike Mecha. He's been so impressive on this Diva as the payload approaches the destination here at the Golden Point. The question is, is anybody going to get to it? No. And Superior is going to not be able to get this point. C-Team ties it up at one. Especially going into that last battle, C-Team had more ults by the number and almost didn't need them, especially with that beautifully placed ult by Spike Mecha and that well-timed Dragon Blade by Trash Road, just cleaning up the last bits of Superior that were holding them back. So Jedi Ron Paul with their play of the game here, he was impressive on the Winston, so ties up the game here for the C team, and that was on the attack too, so really an impressive game all around, but C, team's, C team comes out with a win two to one. And so we're tied up here at halftime, so Really, both of these teams playing well. One on the control and one on the um, escort map. So we come into our next game mode here. What do you? What should we expect coming in from both of these teams as we tie it up at one-one? Again, I feel like the first game was a lot of C team and Superior trying to feel out the other, the 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 other, trying to figure out what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. You know, seeing where they where they can push 
um, you know, especially harder where uh, they're, they're, they should be expecting that kind of pushback. And, uh, you know, seeing C team switching off from that more meta comp of the, the Zarya and the Ryan to that straight dive, it almost seems like Superior wasn't necessarily expecting that because even though they had been running that against them, the, uh, in a lot of situations where, you know, especially with that Huduk quick pick, Superior was already going into that fight five to or, uh, five to six, and it was up to Supersonic to either pop that res and be down for the rest of the fight, uh, and have that down for the rest of the fight, or to just continue on and uh, go in uh, a person down and wait for them to come back and try and get that deep dive. And a lot of times it, it worked for Admioko to just go straight into the to C team's backline and take out their healers and. Um, I felt that C team didn't necessarily have a perfect response to that if uh, Huduk was down because that was a big deterrent. So even though you know Winston has a lot of health and he's uh, he's got a large hitbox and especially with Diva as well, large hitboxes, but they're they're a critical spot that that satisfying ding that every widow main loves to hear. It's just such an easier spot to hit than let's say like another widow or a, uh, an ulting mercy. And so it was a big deterrent uh, to not be so aggressive with their dives. But the second that they, they you know, whether it was Air's pulse bomb that, that knocked Huduk out of the fight or, you know, midway through the fight, Superior just capitalized on that shortage. And uh, I'm thinking that C-Team is going to have to find a way to, to respond to that, uh, you know, aggressive dive, you know, from, from at Miyoko. Otherwise, you know, we might be seeing another either very close game or it could just end in the next two. I don't, I, I'm, it, it'd be hard for me to say uh, at this point, but going into this one, one, I think both teams have a pretty good idea of what not only their strengths are, but the other teams. Um, and on Hanamura, this is a, another good map for widow on defense as well as attack. If you know your positioning well, and you know, the sight lines. And let's talk about that for a second here, because yes, our third map here is Hanamura. So this is the map chosen by uh, Superior because they did lose that last round. So coming into Hanamura here, there's a lot of places where, like you said, the Widow can play out. So uh, should, uh, but Huduk, uh, they're just assembling the heroes right now, so Huduk could change. But is this more of a Hanzo map, or do you think this is more of a Widow map to play out? I definitely think the first position on attack is more fa favored towards the Hanzo uh, with that very tight choke. Um, you know, it's it's easier to get you know corner shots around to quickly peek, uh, have that fully drawn arrow, and then quickly dive back to the side. But it's also a lot easier since Hanzo has that wall climb, where Widow has that rechargeable grappling hook to just climb up to the that that easy to see side on the uh, uh, on the right side of the defense and just get a quick cu couple shots off and then jump back down to your healers. Attackers, mm -hmm. but on on um, attack, you definitely have Polly going uh, Farah and. We've seen in the past that even though Huduk, uh, you know, Hanzo is a projectile with Storm Arrow, it, it's a it's a very quick, easy way for for Huduk to just shut that down quickly and focus on the rest of the team and quickly build that ult. Because you see uh, Spike Mecha back on the Zarya, even though he had a great game on um, Diva last game. You know, looking for a Dragon Surge coming into this next game. So we're going to see ourselves here and um, Hanzo here, you're right, Huda coming in with that Hanzo play. But not much of a sniper coming in, so Polly's going to be the only real sniper here. Huda gets the first pick and, I mean, can we talk, can we, like, try and strafe away from Huda? But because, I mean, we, we're talking about him all game here and it's not like we can stop because he's been going off so much this game. And um, just Huda, you can tell why he's in the all-star game for, for overtime champions here. Exactly. And, you know, a, a quick pick from a Hanzo or a Widow definitely sets the stage for that battle because now they're down a res or you're down a healer. And, you know. And so Polly's going to have himself a try here on the uh, here on the Pharah, which is going to be an interesting uh, try here because Pharah and Pharah not really helping out with that Mercy play here. Supersonic uh, finally getting up on this Pharmacy combo, but here comes the Dragon Strike already coming in for Huduk. That's going to get one, that's going to get two. How about three kills for Huduk? Santa Maria! What a play by Huduk there for his play. Oh, that, oh, Ed. the triple kill and the taking down on the tank. Huduk is just... Having having the having a day with with Superior, who doesn't seem to have much 
of a response is they're gonna they're gonna be pushed back at the choke. You know, the rest of the team is building their alts, but again, Hooduck building that alt super quickly. And you'll see here too, and they both know what's on the line here, so both of them play extremely cautious, but also can play extremely aggressive at times. They know what's at stake here, they know that the winner moves on to the championship, the loser season is over, so we'll see Superior coming in with a few kills here. Jedi Ron Paul, the only one on point, so so far so good for Superior. They may have themselves the first tick here, and here comes Polly picking off Huda. So that's going to be huge, and that forces C team back. So Superior finally finds themselves an answer for uh, Huduk and the rest of C team. So two minutes on the clock, they've got themselves the first point. Definitely, and you can see uh, already going into this next battle, five minutes, almost six minutes to capture the second point on Hanamura. You have a, you have what could be a graviton and a, um, rocket barrage coming in on 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 uh, Superior side. Graviton search coming out now here. Here comes the rocket rush by Polly. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. What a play by Polly. Santa Maria, what a play. And so Polly's gonna have himself a team kill. And so C team with no answer. Superior's got a fast take 526 on the clock. You know Polly has to be thinking, all right, Hood Duck, I see you. You can get a triple kill on the choke. Well, I'm gonna do you one better. We're gonna pop a quad right on your team with five minutes, almost five and a half minutes as time remaining in the bank. And that's huge because you usually see four minutes on the clock and this kind of game, you usually see that time go down. How about almost a minute and a half added to four minutes left if they make this, if they make it to the next round? I mean, that is huge. It, it is. It is such, that was such a wonderfully timed, you know, all economy by Superior. They had more than enough at that point, but they really only needed the two. They had the pharmacy coming in on the top right. Air just n nailing that Graviton in the back right corner, picking up as many of the of C team as they could. And you know Hudux got to be going to this next point thinking, all right, that pharmacy needs to go down. That was our downfall. We're going to take them down first. And then after that, we can just push straight through to the point. If they can do it, we can do it too. And there's your there's your there's your answer for Huduk to try and take down Polly. Huduk's gonna move on over to this Widowmaker to start us off here on the attack. So really, if you're what 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 are if you're C team right now, what should you be thinking about coming into their uh, their try here in the first round? Definitely, that pharmacy is on their minds. Uh, you know, the 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 freshest wounds are always the most recent ones. But again, um, not much of a change on either side. You know, still running pharmacy on the superiors. Um, both both teams are still running the same healers. Haven't seen much of a change up uh, in that. But again, both teams running the Brigida, which is you know, she can be seen as as a support. But a lot of teams like to use her as sort of a a mid sort of a combination of all of a DPS, a tank, and a healer. With the quick armor packs, can really save your life in a pinch. Uh, the shield bash is always a great response to a Rhine shield. You get close enough to him, and you you. Uh, Bring your shield up and right click, and that, that shield drops, and you have a full line set on the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. So we're already going to see a, a little bit of a stagger here to start us off here for Superior. That Pharaoh from Bali, as well as the Reinhardt from At Miyoko, starting off the defense here. And so Huduk, and we said this earlier, Huduk with that answer to start us off, takes down Polly. So there goes the Rockets, and this allows C-Teams to push in with a 6v4 in favor of them. So C-Team has themselves a fast push as well, trying to get as much as much as a tick as they can here as they push off Superior already. So what a push by C-Team thus far. They've got themselves a good team kill as the Reds comes up from Juice Man on Jedi Ron Paul, which forces, C, uh, forces Superior all the way back. We didn't see this from Superior. How how about a push here by C-Team to start us off here? 3.15 left on the clock. 7.12 going into this next point. And it definitely was a well-executed push by C-Team. I think that, that at Miyoko's positioning was a little a little uh, um, too optimistic, especially with that, that right click from, uh, from Spike Mecha to just cancel that charge and take out Superior's main tank. But now you see them holding the high grounds going into this next fight. So we're gonna see, yes, we're gonna see C team try and play the lower ground here. Superior's got themselves Iron Kill as Huda gets himself two kills so far. That starts it off for C team, so what a play so far. They've got themselves a 5v1 in the middle, make it a 5v0 as the C team makes them the A team as they have six and a half minutes to go here for the next round. And here I was thinking that five minutes and 30 was a lot. C team coming out almost out of left field with that, that insane push 
almost seeming to just snowball superior off that second, even though they had more than enough time to, you know, get themselves built, get themselves ready. Even though Gohan was coming in with the late respawn, they were holding that high ground, but they just seemed to wait and wait and wait until all of C team was on that point and didn't seem to have a, a much of a response to them. And so coming in, what, like we said, four minutes, you usually see time go down. We saw 526 on the clock for Superior. An additional two and a half minutes for C Team. So we're in for a good one if it comes down to the final point here. Because it looks like both of these teams know what it takes to push these guys to the limits. Exactly. And especially what I think was, was especially impressive on uh, C Team side was that that uh, you know communication and synergy uh, that we saw from Superior to take that point on that second point was dreams are made of that kind of stuff but superior or ct managed to just push in on their on their uh their wits alone and you didn't i didn't see an alt uh from superior or from sorry from c team until near the very end where spike mecha popped that rally almost you know uh you know wasn't even necessary at that point because superior just didn't have the speed or the ability to catch back up to them so with less time on the clock here superior has themselves the first try here in round two so we're gonna see if they can push it up here at just as fast and another pause i don't know what this pause is for here um as there's just this noise going on here for about i think it's e either a heal or the fire strike here but um so just right all you hear is this little swoosh right <laughs> i can hear that too yep yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a at D bagel right now and it's just the, the the mid flame strike just right in front of my screen someone left oh. that's why Oh ah. boy, it's just it's just right in that it's just right in your face, like oh boy. Looks like um, it's a it's a disconnect from uh from Killer Kel. Yeah, East Coast West hurricane Street season. Side. So <laughs> um yeah, so it's cool we feel oh yeah, so basically both of the teams knowing what uh connection goes through, so I mean basically just having a connect just basically having a connection issue on both sides, but it's really hurting Superior right now because I'm but it, it may not be too bad because Superior this connection uh disconnect happening early on doesn't really affect the alt standards here because everybody's at like the lower tens, maybe lower or lower tens maybe still in the single digits. Especially, yeah. I mean the only the only double digits that we're seeing are uh, Jedi Ron Paul's Earth Shatter, uh, at Miyoko's Earth Shatter, uh, Gohan's Trans, and uh, Polly's, um, sorry, Polly's uh, Rocket Barrage. So, you know, if any time to have a disconnect like this, it's this early in the game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so not not too bad of a disconnect so far as Killer Kel gonna play on the Brigida now as he comes back. So, just gonna lose a little bit of a time, lose a little bit of time here. So, they're gonna have to fall back for Killer Kel and Gohan gonna go down by the hands of Huduk, so the sniper coming out for uh, the, the all-star from season three here, and he's just playing it off like it's nothing. So C-Team's gonna have to, or Superior's gonna have to find an answer here as they try and push back and reset. And again, it doesn't seem like um, Superior has that much of a response other than just pushing the, the, the front as hard as they can and hoping that they keep their heads down. And it looks like they have a, it, it kind of seems like they have a barrier right in the middle and that name is Jedi Ron Paul right now because he is working that, working that uh, Reinhardt so well as he gets a tackle on Admi Oko, so that takes care of the tank. Air's gonna have to try and find a way out of there but is denied. So just in front of the gate, just like I said, there's a barrier there and Sabir's gotta find a way to break through, or Sabir's gotta find a way to break through that. We even saw a, a tad bit of uh, Juice Man's Battle Mercy over there taking down Air at the very tail end of that push. Um, you know, going into this next one, both Ryans have Earth Shatter, but Supersonic does have their Valk, so that might help their team, that little extra health boost just constantly going in, helping them push past that iron wall that is Jedi Ron Paul. Well, you're also going to see here, too, that Graviton search for Trash Ronin coming up, if he can get that. So that, that's been huge for C-Team so far as well. So there's the Graviton search. Earth Shatter coming in, and just as I said, that Graviton search coming in, now where's the follow-up? Not much of a follow-up happening, but a huge Earth Shatter happening here for Jedi Ron Paul. So C-Team's got themselves a good push to start as Air all by himself in that front mode. And he's going to die. He's going to get punished for it. So still the barrier right in front of that gate. Superior's got to find an answer. Polly on that Pharaoh trying to get a pick off on Hooduck, but Trash Rodan ends it early. So another hold by C-Team. Superior is losing time on this clock. And, you know, especially with that well-placed Graviton... You know, 
uh, the the current all, uh, comp that um, C team is running doesn't have a whole lot of heroes that can capitalize on that. You know, um, uh, an Earth Shatter can do a decent amount of damage, but it's mainly meant to work in a similar way to immobilize the team, to group them all together. You know, you, a lot of times you see Azaria working well with a Hanzo, but with Huduk on Widow, uh, that that you know closes the, the amount of room that they can for uh, another sniper. So we're gonna see here finally superior pushes through that middle gate here but the question is there's the there's the graviton search there by air but the question is no fun is anybody gonna follow up that's a no because the rest of the his team is back Polly has himself no a rocket rush now incoming so the question is is he gonna use it there's one there's two for Polly, and he's gonna have himself a good team kill the start off supersonic does get the rest on air and at miyoko ends the team fight on trash rodent so Finally, after so much time wasted on the clock, Superior is finally going to get themselves the point here with two minutes left to go. Exactly, and that was just a, a wonderful placement uh, and, and time for Polly. You know, that quick pick on Widow or on Huduk to just shut that part down. So he was almost uncontested to just pop that rocket barrage down and pick up the the. the those extra kills, and then Admioko to just charge in and take out that last bit of resistance gave Superior the momentum that they needed to cap that point. But now, like you said, two minutes and uh, just over 10 seconds to go into this next round. Not seeing many alts on either side, but we are close to a trans on Superior's end and a Graviton. So we're going to get this started off here. Graviton starts coming in. The question is the follow up here, and there's the follow up here. How about this for a team here? C team is going to have themselves a good push. Probably going to suicide, so that allows the reset for Superior. But what a hold by C team. Only using the ult from Trash Rodent on that Graviton Surge. So holding on to two more ults here. Infrared Sight and Earth Shatter. C team's going to have themselves a good, good ult coming into this next fight. And again, Jedi Ron Paul making me eat my own words. Like I said, they didn't have much to combo with it. But then again, you saw that swing, swing of the hammer and then charging in to pick that that un unlucky soul out of that graviton and into the wall to shut down that push by superior it's kind of like a roulette when that happens yeah when Je when a reinhardt comes into a graviton search you don't know who's gonna get hit it's kind of like a russian roulette kind of a thing <laughs> but now we see going in superior has rally valkyrie and trans seeing what they can do with this pop in the rally right as the fight starts so popping the rally, like you said, pops the rally. So Superior is going to have themselves a good push. 60 seconds on the clock, though. So this very well may be their last push here if they start to stagger. At Miyoko is going to get a started off, though, with a kill on the, the bagel. So really helping out his team right now. Polly back on this Genji we've seen so effective earlier. And so Earth Shatter coming in now for At, uh, at Miyoko. Does get a few kills. And how about Air with the assistance there to get themselves six on uh, zero right now on the point. And Juice Man is going to be the only one with that Valkyrie coming in and it's gonna lose it after at Miyoko does kill him so right now gets the second tick the third tick coming in graviton search trying to hold back anything here as the last tick happens trash road not on that lucio not gonna get back on time so 24 seconds on the clock i believe that's about five minutes gone from superior's time so c team's gonna have themselves playing time to try and capture this if we take it to the next round especially you know we're seeing we saw what superior could do with those five minutes shaved it down but they had they seemed to have lost that momentum on the first point but the second time around they took a deep breath they looked at what they had looked at what they were working against popped that rally and then just started off ad miyoko diving in and taking out you know that quick pick on the bagel and then just halting them down into that that uh stairway but then again air with that triple kill those that the zarya's love just absorbing that damage with their shields and then left clicking and just melting anything unfortunate to get in their way and we saw that with air mm -hmm. and so now coming into this now you have superior that that had five minutes melted off their time let's go to c team now they have six and a half minutes left and if that's the same case with 30 seconds about 30 seconds left that's six minutes that c team has to push through so superior's really got to clamp down here coming into this next round Especially, and uh, we're seeing we're seeing uh, Ad Miyoko with the rest of his team again, and uh, hopefully doesn't uh, you know that that uh, hiding in that room just across from the choke can be a very quick and easy pick, but losing a, a main tank so early into that fight can be so devastating to the rest of your team, and that's what gave C team the the hole that they needed to just dive headfirst through and push onto that first point and just take it right out from Superior's hands. 
And so we saw earlier C team on their push. They had an extreme, an extraordinary push with that first one. But Polly back on this Farah here might be might be more of a threat here as he starts off already on Jedi Ron Paul. So a little bit of a different story here for the C team as Superior has themselves their first reset since at uh, at Miyoko goes down. You and again, you know, a lot of times you see a Farah uh, up against the Widow and you want to question it. But Polly has been showing that, you know. He can he can hold his own up against uh, a, a you know a very skilled projectile player, and is just raining down fire on C team's tanks. And who they're trying to get off a pick on top, but not much happening there. So Polly still got himself the air advantage here, playing the ground game so far. It's working for them, but Superior and Superior has themselves a good kill here as Gohan going off with the Zenyatta being impressive all the way through the series. So right now, Superior has the answer for C-Team we were looking for against uh, this this massive push that happened in the first round. And C-Team's got to re- and uh, Superior, rather, got to reset. Again, you see Gohan going ham, just, you know, throwing that Discord orb out, uh, out and then just right, left-clicking however you can to get those, uh, you know, heightened damage orbs on, on tanks. It just melts and builds your ult so much faster and you can see now we have a valkyrie on superior as well as an earth shatter so let's see what atmioko can do with that so graviton search coming in now that's going to be from uh that's going to be from air now here comes the transcendence being popped by uh transcendence being popped by the bagel so but right now here comes superior on this defense push and what a hold by them another one not wasting too many alts are not wasting an alt at all actually Superior's going to have the ult advantage coming in Especially in that that pick by Gohan, uh, you know, headshotting Puduk, who's now switching to the Hanzo to hopefully try and get a, you know, a more mobile pick onto uh, on, on Superior's end. But again, with Superior, we see the high, the more alt economy, seeing what they can do with that, especially with the rocket barrage. We've seen Polly just having a wonderful game with that, but a wasted Earth Shatter on from Atmioko. And you're right, Admioko actually, he gets launched, and Admioko, Jedi Ron Paul was in the middle of that, but gets launched away. But so far, so good. Superior has himself three more kills to start off this team fight. So once again, C-Team just cannot find the answer from for, from the first round there. They just can't find that rhythm to get them going. Superior has themselves another good defensive push. Again, you know, just, just under, or just over half the amount of time wasted at three minutes and 40 seconds, you know. Uh, superior with with again a a graviton and a rocket barrage. So hoping to to find a time to use that and give the rest of the team some breathing room. Graviton surge coming in for air. Now the question is to follow. Here comes Polly with one, two, and three. Can he get anything else? And he's not going to be able to get anything. There's another kill on Hooduck. So what a play! A team kill swipe for Superior. What a play by them. And they're going to have another defensive push. C team without an answer for this call. Polly is just having having the uh, the game on Hanomura, popping uh, Rocket Barrage, getting at least three kills every time that they've used it. Just wonderfully placed, wonderfully timed with that Graviton. Graviton starts coming in right down the middle. Here comes the Transcendence, saving someone though. Huduk, and Huduk does get one, does get Polly at the same time too. So see team does have a little bit of an opening here they have the window to try and get another point 240 left on the clock and finally takes down the rest of the team so superior is going to stay back on this point let c team have it so finally c team with the answer two and a half minutes left to go though so not as much time they're only going to get an additional 30 seconds here again and that'll bring us to just under three minutes which you know is well more than enough time if they get another push like they did the first time Especially going in with a Earth Shatter and a Trans, while Superior only has an Earth Shatter as a response. We may see more if, as well, but high ground staying up top for Superior here. C team's going to have themselves a little bit of a push here, as a five. As you see, everybody lining up here, so a, a graviton surge maybe in the process. Polly uses that rocket barrage, but doesn't get anybody. So right now the door is wide open for C team to try and push, but they're going to uh, play back just a little bit here. Rally comes in to try and help out his team. Killer Kel trying to give him his team some help and armor. And so right now, just a battle of who survives longer here on the stagger. And so far, right now, C team winning the fight on this point. Graviton surge. Is there going to be any follow up here as the trance gets popped by the bagel? 
And so not much of a follow-up, so the Graviton Surge is wasted by air. So right now, Superior's got to find themselves an answer to hold this point. But time is melting still, and Superior has themselves a good hold. So right now, just a push and shove. Superior winning the fight so far, though. And you definitely saw earlier, very early into that push, C-Team had the ult advantage. They had the Dragon Surge. But it didn't, uh, Hudok, you know, didn't seem to capitalize on it because, you, you know, you saw that... Trans coming in from Gohan to protect his team. Hoodock holding on to that Dragon Surge, you know, hopefully using it later into this next fight with almost just under a minute 30 left. You know, a couple more, three or four more pushes from C Team, hoping that, you know, into this next fight, we do see Dragons and Grav coming in while Superior doesn't have much of an, uh, an any alt to respond with, but hopefully an Earthshatter early into this next fight. So they're gonna stay up top now this time. Graviton Surge coming out of here comes the Gravit here comes a Dragon Strike coming through. Is that gonna get anybody? Unfortunately, it does not, and it looks like a lot of help being gained there. So here comes the team from Superior trying to get up there. And here comes the Rocket Barrage right in the middle of the hallway. Gets one, gets two, gets three. Sasha Maria, what a play by Polly. Gets themselves a good kill on C Team. So 45 seconds left to go. Superior has to Superior has the defensive answer. C Team's gotta find a way as they're gonna push back and reset. Polly's got himself Polly. more kills. Polly definitely making up for that last uh, um, rocket uh, barrage that didn't seem to get anyone. Definitely making up for it in that tight area, you know, which is a perfect funnel for that ult to just get as much damage into that tiny area as they could. And without much of an answer to it, three kills just in the very short amount of time. 18 seconds going into this next push, you know, Valkyrie and Earthshatter on C team side. Let's see how, how well this last push will go. And the story really of this series right now has been the overtime plays because that's been impressive so far. Graviton Surge coming in, Dragon Strike. I don't see, sorry, no follow up anywhere for Superior. So C Team has themselves a little bit of an advantage here coming into this. Overtime is activated, but Superior has the answers right now. The plays by Superior going off here. The only one left to play here is Juice Man with that Valkyrie trying to get a rest, but it's no dice. And unless anything else happens, Superior has themselves game number two here on Hanamura. Sukhoi Omigoto. And you can, I mean, Polly on that Pharah was just wonderfully timed and placed alts, but air walking away with play of the game here. And a quintuple kill that which includes Polly's quadruple. So really, that was that was the play of the game, but and and really just a great play by the Zarya there. So really coming out for superior now they have the advantage they are one game away from upsetting the undefeated team and moving on to the championship game so if you're c team now you gotta kind of you gotta kind of worry here because now you gotta win the next two to move on exactly it, it's definitely crunch time for c team going into this next match trying to figure out what they need to change to go into this next round because you did see a lot of you know Huduk changing from hanzo to widow hanzo to widow trying to find which was a better answer to superiors you know successful pushes and successful defenses it didn't seem like really either way um was a good response to that but looking at those cards from the last game 14 barrage kills from Polly on both attack and defense i mean that's insane that's it's, absolutely it, insane uh, he's uh, they are they are having the the Definitely riding a high from that last one. And I'm sure all of Superior is going into this, you know, uh, game three, or sorry, game four, ahead of, uh, you know, the undefeated team in the league. A, a, you know, a team that has 3 0'd many games, both in their, uh, their you know, previous seasons and uh, in this most recent season. And now mm -hmm. we're trying to see uh, which maps are being picked and uh, banned. Going into uh, for map four, uh, hybrid. So yes, the hybrid, the salt plus the escort here. So this is going to be huge because, um, like we said, C team, we haven't seen them in this situation before. The undefeated team, they they've played a lot of three O games. Now they're down two to one. Now they're kind of feeling the pressure as we try to pick our map here. Blizzard World does get banned to start here, so it's going to be a matter of. Uh, I, a lot of people, the common choice is King's Row, but CT may want to change it up a little bit here. But, I mean, could be very well because we saw Hudak on back in the All-Star game on King's Row with this Widowmaker and Hanzo. I mean, he just went off on King's Row, and there's the pick from Trash Roden right there, King's Row. So this could be the map where CT takes advantage of that Widowmaker from Hudak. 
especially on King's Row. Um, you know, even if Huduk decides to go with the Hanzo and uh, nail those Dragon Surges, we've seen dozens of that, uh, you know, Wombo combo coming in on that map. It's a, it's a very tight quarters, but it's also got long sight lines, which is just perfect for those Widowmakers. Especially if you see Polly on that Pharah, it might be the map where uh, C Team has a response to that. You know, you didn't see a lot of them. Uh, it almost felt like Polly could go in without a, uh, you know, could could fly around without much of a worry. And whenever they had their ult, they just popped it when it was needed and you know stopped that push and stop, uh, you know, furthered their push if they were on attack. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're coming to King's Row now. And then, so this is game four. C team down one point, but so now they have now that they picked the map here for King's Row, they have a little bit of advantage. But let's talk about the map itself a little bit. King's Row does have its ups and downs, but what do you think is going to be the most important play coming into this map here on King's Row? Definitely looking like it's going to be, uh, you know, especially after what we saw in Hanomura with a quick pick on either side and then a steamroll to, to capture that point. It's slightly different now that it's your cap and a point and then pushing this slow moving yeah, payload. But going into this, especially on attack, you know, if Huduk can get that quick pick or if uh, Superior can just get another one of those quick pushes past that choke and just overwhelm C team, capping that first point definitely does set the momentum for the uh, further down the line because if you get three out of three players uh, down on one side, you can still stagger and slow down the attacking team uh, you know, as they further the payload before you eventually have to cut it off. Mm -hmm. But going and, uh, in on... Sorry, um, go I don't know about this team comp here because it looked like they had a lot there. That team comp looked a little weird to start off but for Superior there, but Superior is going to change and they're going to um, mobilize here on the defense mode. So I think really um, this first point is a really important one, but let's talk about if they get down there, the third point, because that home stretch is that home stretch is super important in that last play because we've seen a lot of good plays, a lot of good holds in any game you play really if uh, here in Overwatch because that home stretch is super important. Definitely. And, you know, it does come down to, um, oh, okay, wow, we are seeing uh, Huduk on the Symmetra. Um, hoping that's a, that's, that's a misclick, but going into that last point definitely does depend on who can hold the high ground and what's, what positions, because you get a Junkrat up on that, uh, that far uh, high ground or uh, just above that, that the, the Mega Health Kit either a Widowmaker or a Junkrat, and uh, if you go uncontested in that situation, it's just uncontested fire raining down on your team. Mm -hmm. And just as you said about the Symmetra thing, Huduk moves on over to the Widowmaker, so back into his main element here as uh, Huduk back on this Widowmaker now, trying to get a high pick here, um, staying up right above the theater, so right now it's just a matter of time here for C Team to get their first push in as uh, Jedi Run Fall pushes up this first point so far. Trash road and so a double sniper combo coming out for C team here with that Huduk on uh, Widowmaker and Hanzo for Trash Rona gets the first tick and so far so good for C team here as they're gonna get a few picks off and back on Hanamura we saw this what a push here on King's Row C team has themselves the first payload. Again, the the current comp definitely does complement and in, almost encourage a double snipers. You know, with, with the Zarya and the uh, Hanzo ult, but as well as the Widow to just shut down any other potential fast-moving opponents. With Polly up in the sky, you can bet that Huduk is, is, has, has, has his eyes peeled on that sky for that, that bird-like helmet that, that, that Pharah is wearing just to, to shut that down. Because that was a big, big uh, push on Superior's end. But going into this, we do have Dragons and uh, Valk on the uh, C team side. And C team giving no time to Superior to rest here. As they already, they've already pushed it up here. Nobody dying in that process too, so really good push up by C team here. We're gonna, like you said, two alts coming up here. Trash Ronin and Juice Man gonna have the Valkyrie and the Dragon Strike coming in. And only the Earth Shatter right now for Admioko with the Valkyrie coming in for Supersonic. So really, here comes the Earth Shatter for Admioko. Gets a huge four people. So right now, that allows Superior to come in. Polly's got Polly and Admioko working this push really well. And so C Team pushed all the way back. Admioko, what an Earth Shatter to start us off here. Saves the Valkyrie for Supersonic. 
then definitely seems like Huduk is actually is is struggling to shut down this pharmacy because right up there you saw Polly getting really quick shots down on Huduk and Juice Man, effectively shutting down one of their DPSs and one of their healers, letting Admioko just go to town and with the rest of the team to just follow up with that and shut down the rest of C team and push them all the way back. Juice Man's gonna get the res on Trash Road in a start off, but the payload stops right now, reversing around that first turn. Graviton Search coming in. Now, where's the follow up? Here comes the Earth Shatter from Jenna Ron Paul. No follow up coming as Polly goes down after that Earth Shatter. So, a good play by Jedi Ron Paul to take out the Rocket Barrage from that Earth, uh, from that Graviton Search. So, C Team is gonna have themselves another push around turn number two. And now, coming into this, we see Dra uh, just about to have a Graviton on C Team side with. Uh, uh, Trash Run's Dragon Surge, so we're definitely going to see you know, C-Team gearing up to get that Dragon Surge coming into this next fight. While on the other hand, Superior has almost all their ults, you know, sans that, um, um, that Graviton popping Rally just to start this, 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 uh, fight off with the charge. And I don't think you can get much closer than this. 0 0.07 meters left to go on the point. Dragon Graviton starts coming in with that Dragon Strike, but the Trans comes up. What a great play there by Gohan. Earth Shatter comes in, a huge one. Three people go down. And Jedi Ron Paul trying to swing away here. At Miyoko goes down, but so does Jedi Ron Paul at the last second. The Fire Strike coming out from At Miyoko. So a good defensive hold by Superior as they as C Team falls back. And that Halo is going to reverse itself back behind the five meter line. That Trans definitely coming in at the perfect time to save superior's counter to that push especially with that coming in and halting that wombo combo and then that miyoko dropping that hammer down and effectively stopping that push in its tracks going into this next fight we see polly with his uh with his rocket seeing how well that that'll uh, work out with us and killer kill getting that quick pick on who so here comes the rocket rush coming out for Polly, but Spike Mecha ends it early, only getting the bagel. So right now a good push for Superior on the defensive end. C team just taking down Hudak in the process, and so Superior's got themselves another good pull here. And C team, and this happens uh, to the it's only happening to the red side really, but another pause here is uh, C team loses one of their players um, due to, uh, disconnecting, I believe, and that's gonna be Jedi Ron Paul, um, on that Reinhardt, so another good defense as we take a pause real quick here on King's Row, so Superior, knowing that they're one game away from the championship here and taking down C-Team extensively, they've only got two minutes left on the clock here, so what does C-Team need to do to try and get back into this game? They definitely need to have an answer for Polly, you know, we're seeing, um, who, we're seeing Killer Kel countering Hooduck. We're seeing Polly countering Hooduck. You know the double snipers can work out well, as we can you know see with the with with C Team's first successful push. But it seems that coming into this next battle, uh, just getting very close to that 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 point, at Miyoko coming in with with uh, you know the the shatter needed to put to stop that ult, and then following Polly's. Uh, rocket barrage to just swing his hammer around, taking out Juice Man and following uh, Air as they took out the last two DPSs. C Team has to find a way to switch it up, you know. Hello. Pick, uh, you know, get picks that that can help uh, with the follow up of, of alts coming in. And as we can see, only At Miyoko and Debagel have alts going into this next push. And so. That's, I mean, that, that huge DC as well, because Jedi, Ron Paul, going to lose a lot of percentage on that ult, um, that ult as well. So that's going to be huge for C-Team to try and work around that. And they are on the attacking side. So C-Team's really got to find a way to push the limits here as they have less than two minutes left to go. And Superior's got themselves a first strike. It's Amioko, what a land on the fire strike. Gets the tackle as well. And so right now, Superior winning the fight here on the defensive side. And C-Team pushed all the way back to their spawn point, so Superior has the answer, C-Team not making the call. And again, Killer Kel with that whip shot to take out Jer uh, Jedi Ron Paul, leaving the rest of that backline open, right after uh, At Miyoko charging in, taking down you know a very important pick. But now we see Hudok changing to the McCree, so hopefully the, you know he's seeing that the, that Widow maybe not be working out the best to stay with his team as the McCree, with that project, uh, with that hit scan to hopefully take that Farah down going in. We see dragons coming in, as well as multiple alts on both sides. But it seems like Superior has alt economy for this fight. 
Alt economy coming in as well. Polly not using that rocket barrage just yet. Here comes the uh, here comes the graviton surge. Is Polly going to be able to use his rocket barrage? No. Oh, Hudak shuts down Polly just in time. But Superior still not finding an answer. A C team has, or sorry, C team not finding an answer here. Superior is still being is still pushing them all the way back. But C team has a little more of a bit of a stagger here as C team's getting a push on this payload, finally touching it after all this time. And so right now, C Team's got to find an answer. 20 seconds left. This may very well be their last push if this happens. Graviton Surge coming in now. Is the follow-up going to happen here? Not much of a follow-up. Does get the Deadeye from Hudak, though. And also, Graviton Surge coming in. Rocket Barrage coming in for Polly. Two kills is huge right now, and that's going to help. And that's a third kill from Polly as well. So Superior has themselves a play-by-play -play here. A push and shove as C Team's going to have to find a way to get this in overtime. It definitely looks like both teams are trying to play chicken with their uh, Zenyatta ults. You know, with that 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 uh, grab coming in to try and get him to pop it early. So then, when that dead eye comes around, they don't know who it's where it's coming from. So C Team Superior uses that Earth Shatter at Miyoko, trying to get everybody off the point, but it's not going to work. As the Tracer now coming in, Trash Rona now in the Genji. So just trying to get onto this point. Who duck is punished? Overtime is it. And only one point for C team. So Superior now one point and a couple of meters away from moving on to the championship. And the pressure is on for C team to defend. And you know, you saw late, like at the very end of that round, you saw the quick changes um, from C team to try and get on that point quicker. Jedi Ron Paul switched to the Winston. Spike Mecha switched to the Tracer to try and get to that point as quickly as possible. Especially with tra Trash Roden on. Uh, um, sorry, on Genji. And those changes might have helped if they came a lot sooner in the match, but it just seemed like C Team was was riding on the coattails of that first successful push, and le after letting, oh, and it looks like we have another disconnect. Uh, this time on C Team, so maybe the uh, the curse is switching on to the uh, the the defending side. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing uh, C Team. Getting a lot of successfully successful first pushes, but then not changing up too much about their comp to try and counter Superior, who doesn't for you know, doesn't necessarily need to change too much up about you know who they're running and what's on uh, who's on what uh, uh, what what player. Hudok switching to that McCree definitely opened up a spot for them for for C team with that dead eye that that knocks two kills. But then with Polly uh, raining down justice from above, taking down three members of C team, left teams both on even ends, and then C team just barely failed to capitalize on that that uh, that that push was forced back again. And then it wasn't until at the very end that we saw a more mobile comp that maybe could have done more to shake up Superior's superior defense. Mm -hmm. And so now, now we keep talking about this all throughout. Superior now one point and a hundred and fourteen point five eight meters away from taking from moving on to the championship game. So that reverse sweep against Voltage was really a high point for them because they're all they're they may be able to take down the only undefeated team left here in the over overtime champions community. But let's not forget here, C team has themselves. A good defensive play because you still have Hudak with that sniper, and he he may have moved on to the McCree. Did get a few plays here and there, so um, but Hudak not playing the McCree the majority of that round. So do you think uh, what should C team do to really try and clamp down and try and defend this to take this to game five on Superior? I mean, I, you can definitely see um, more of a I would say off meta comp that you see uh, you've seen uh, I've seen a lot in the uh, Golden Plat. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, bracket uh, in overtime with a the Reinhardt as a you know mo uh, oh my goodness I got disconnected. That is unfortunate. But oh as I was saying, you see a a, a more uh, mobile enough comp that still has that uh, def the Reinhardt, but the Diva ha still has the freedom to you know put more pressure on the Pharah if the Widowmaker or the McCree isn't necessarily working out. Mm -hmm. So we rate um, Rice to come in back into this game here. So um, I think I just sent you an invite. But anyways, so um, we move on to uh, Superior's try here on the point. So right now you see the team comes here. Polly sticking on that Pharah. Air actually moving on to actually 
As I said, that air was going to move on to that Genji, but now is on to Zenyatta. So really going to be interesting here. Three supports coming out for Superior with Brigida, Mercy, and um, the Zenyatta coming out. As the only DPS right now for is uh, for Superior is Polly to start off this attack, trying to get a feel for what C Team has going here. And Hudak starting off with a good pick on air. That Supersonic does get the res on him, so right now, C-Team knows the pressure. They have to play this well. Trash Ronin gets the Storm Arrow to start us off here. But still, so far so good for C-Team here. On the hold, right now, Superior tries to find a way to push through this defense. And C-Team's gonna fall back just a little bit, but a 5-on-4 battle here, and it looks like C-Team might have the push that they need to start off this defensive hold. So right now, just pushing it all along the lines. But here comes Superior. C-Team's actually going to get pushed all the way back as the Bago goes down. So a fast take here by Superior. Three minutes on the clock. But it was the same story for C-Team earlier. They had themselves a fast push. They had themselves more than three minutes on the clock now. But Superior has the storybook in their hands. They're just waiting for the ending. Exactly. And you can see going into this next push, um, Air with the Graviton, that'll definitely help either keep... C team away from them or to help shut them down. But with Spike Mecha, Spike Mecha with the self destruct, we might be seeing uh, Spike Mecha with a response to that Graviton by eating it with her defense matrix. So, here, just a few meters away now, less than 80 meters left to go for Superior's victory to the championship round. The road to the finals is on here for Superior. Literally, the road to the finals here. As we see already, Dragon Strike coming in for Trash Rodan down the middle. Not going to get anybody, but C Team does still have a pick off on Huduk to start us off here in this team fight. Graviton Search coming in now. The question is the follow up. Is it going to happen here? Hammer swinging away from At Miyoko. Earth Shatter does come in as well, but not much. Self Destruct coming in. Where's that coming from? Right down the middle. Spike Mecha has himself a double kill for C Team. So Superior does have themselves a push, but C Team losing two. Uh, C Sorry, Superior losing themselves two people here. C Team's got to find a way, though, that you can see that golden marker right there for the point. C Team now just a few. Uh, Superior just a few meters away from moving on. C Team's got to find a way to get back onto this point. It looks like Jedi Ron Paul is going to be the first to make it there. If he can charge it, just over five meters left to go. Paul uses that rocket barrage to start us off. Gets the double kill. So, so far, Superior on the Superior and gets the team fight. Spike Mecha's got to get there, but it's not going to be inside Superior. It's just Superior, and they move on to the championship round. And it was definitely a ballsy push by Superior then. Both of their supports were down. If C-Team had the ability and was in position to push that, they could have shut them down there. But they had, but Superior done such a good job of shutting them down. And here you can see Gohan with the clutch trans to shut down that Dragon Surge that definitely would have put Superior on their heels running away from that push. But well, what a game by both teams, but the main headline, Superior are on their way to the championship round here in the Season 3 Plant Diamond Playoffs. What a game there. We saw a 1-0 strike on Nepal. C-Team comes back to 1-1, to and finally the game we needed to see from Superior comes out on Hanamura and a 2-1 win on King's Row, taking down the only undefeated now, not now, one win, one loss team, but takes down the only undefeated team in overtime champions. Definitely, and especially Superior has to be riding that momentum into the finals with that 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 reverse sweep, and then now beating the number one seed in the league, the one defeated undefeated team in their division, going on to the finals. Definitely are going to be riding this momentum, but they have to be sure that they are you know, taking notes on who they're playing against and what uh, is going to work and what didn't work about that match. It was definitely an impressive display on both ends, but Superior coming out on top definitely made this game that much more exciting to watch. So, something we never saw, thought we'd see those C team comes into this like 3-0-ing almost anyone coming into this, but now on the other foot, Superior takes and for lack of a better uh, pun here, takes the crown on King's Row to move on to the championship round. So Superior now just awaiting their next, their final opponent to try and win it all. If you're Superior right now, what's going through your mind going into the finals? <laughs> Taking, uh, you know, making sure that whoever they're up against doesn't have a response to what we just witnessed. I'm more than 
positive that whoever they're going up against following the, 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 the next semifinals match is taking close notes of what worked against Superior and what didn't. They're definitely going to be making sure that they have a response to that poly on Farah. Definitely making sure that they can shut down that aggressive main tank that is um, at Miyoko. And just making sure that um, whichever, you know, if they want to run the, you know, a dive against them, that it's more aggressive and it can capitalize more on single picks. Because Hudak did a great job, as we've seen before, as making single picks and, you know, getting his ults quickly, whether it's dragons or infrared. But it just didn't seem like C team had the ability to capitalize on those single those single hits and superior just pushed through that, especially seeing how you know uh, excited they were and how uh, all the the emphasis that they were pushing that they were going to take that last point on King's Row, even though both their supports were down, which was been a lot of cause for a lot of teams to just push back and wait and for their supports to catch up to them, but managed to hold it even though. Uh, C team was trickling in following that. And I'm sure it, you know, both teams definitely showed their A game today. It's just Superior managed to edge their way through on, you know, the last two maps. And it was a wonderful match to, uh, to, to witness, I, I'm sure of. Um, that was a great match. But final thought, final final thoughts here. Who who do you think was your player of the game all the way through that? All the way through that. And incredible to watch series um i know we talked about uh them a lot but definitely Polly definitely showed up um on both genji and uh, Far uh farah you know it, it, genji play was acceptable worked well with the comp that uh um, superior was putting forward but the second that 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 switch to farah came um it 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 turned the tide and even though you know projectile hit scan heroes are you know hit scan especially are great counters to that it didn't seem like c team could you know especially farah nailing down Hudak, taking out tanks focusing their barrage on whether it was a, a tight hallway or uh, a graviton just won the game uh and and, and you know honestly uh, my heart because that was what all Farahs aspire to be. All right. Well, we await the championship game coming up. So that'll do it for us here on the Overtime Champions Community Channel for our semifinal game in the Plat Diamond Champ Plat Diamond Playoffs. For me, Clutch Key, Bryce T as our color, and Bradley as our producer. We thank you guys for watching this presentation of the Overtime Champions Channel. Superior Kit takes over King's Row, takes over Hanamura and Nepal, and Superior is just awesome. They're into the championship round.